Shalom Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, and we are experimenting right now going live with our live stream programming as well that we use. And uh, so we've had a little bit of a snag getting started there. And, uh, but we trust those of you that watch on YouTube, you get to see a little bit more because you get to see the, the information that we're inputting on the screen as well. But those that want to be able to start watching our <clears throat> Israeli News Live on live stream, and I'm a little bit an amateur at this, so we're still working out the bugs on it, you will be able to watch as some are watching right now on live stream are able to see this particular uh, broadcast live. <clears throat> and what we're dealing with today, we're talking about who controls uh, Jerusalem, who controls Israel as a whole. In an article that has been posted on Israel National News by Ari uh, Yashar and Shlomo uh, Periodikovsky, they, there's an article in Israel National News says demand for access to synagogue on the Temple Mount. Now, some of you may not be aware, it's actually on the wall, but the building of the synagogue is just inside the Temple Mount wall. It is, it is what we call the Temple Mount Synagogue. It is the closest place, it is the only place where a Jew can go and prostrate himself uh, on the Temple Mount, according to the biblical mandate. For Jewish people. And this, uh, this temple has also been uh, taken over by the Israeli military and considered now a military zone. Let's take a look at what the article says here. He says that uh, Joint uh, HQ of Temple Mount Organization Chairperson Attorney Aviad Visoli has sent an urgent letter to Jerusalem District Police Chief Moshe Edri demanding that, that he open the synagogue on the walls of the Temple Mount to, the, to Jewish access. The synagogue is on the grounds of a Makama building situated adjacent to the Kotel, the western wall, but extending out over the grounds of the Temple Mount, the holiest site in Judaism as it is called. The synagogue at Makama building has special uniqueness and importance to Jews. And in that it is the only synagogue in the world located within the walls of the Temple Mount, wrote Vesoli. Therefore, this synagogue is the only one in the world where the commandment of prostrating oneself on the Temple Mount, um, <clears throat> excuse me, on the Temple Mount can be fulfilled. Vesoli demanded that Adri respond to his request by Tuesday, adding that if no response is given, the joint uh, HQ activists are prepared to launch legal process against the Israeli police to compel them to enforce the law for preserving the holy sites, which promises free access uh, to holy sites. They're going to be in for a surprise because it's not the police that's in control of this. This is controlled by Rome. And we're going to go into some of these key, uh, key information regarding this. The urgent letter comes as a follow-up after Vasoli's request to enter the synagogue was rejected the day before. Now, now keep in mind, in Israel right now, we are, under, we are in Passover time. We are in the, the, uh, the, the, the Sabbath of Passover. This is a very holy time for the Jewish people. Ten days of this Passover time that we celebrate, and yet we are being denied the access to uh, what would be considered one of uh, Judaism's holiest sites, especially the, the holiest synagogue for Jewish people, to be able to be closer to where the Holy of Holies was actually built, uh, where the Dome of the Rock is now sitting. Uh, but anyway, he goes on to say, like many other Jews, Vesoli was denied access to the Temple Mount during Pesach, which is the Passover, on Sunday. Short of access to the mount, he asked permission to visit the synagogue, but was denied by area commander Avi Bitten, uh, who explained the synagogue had been turned into a military base. Now, since when does the synagogue get turned into a military base? I mean, this is just ridiculous. In response, Vasoli wrote, there is a great doubt as whether a military territory order is in effect on the Mahma area, as police commander Bitten claims. Um, but even if there is one in effect, the, the commands of the law for the preservation of the holy sites takes precedent over that in regards to everything related to free access. That's kind of interesting. The Muslims are given free access uh, to a site that really does not belong to them. Uh, the, the Vatican is given more than free access because it doesn't only get free access, it even takes over 
those holy sites that belong to Judaism. The article continues on right here at the nearing the end. For Jews to their holy place in military territory, said the attorney, what's more safe passage to the synagogue can be defined without harming military territory, residents of Border Patrol soldiers. Addressing Edri Vasoli wrote, as known to you, the state of Israel is a Jewish and democratic state that is subject to the rule of law. At least we think it is. And it is not a military dictatorship in which soldiers, residents, cancel holy sites. I applaud him for, for making this stance. There's also like Moshe Faglin, uh, the former, uh, or who is the, uh, part of the MK, who was running for, for prime minister, uh, against Prime Minister Netanyahu, how he mysteriously got kind of pushed out of the race. All, all the true Jewish people that are there, that are trying to stand for Judaism's rights, for the Jewish people's rights to the land that God has given us, are being silenced. And you cannot help but wonder why. Now, I did not announce that this is a prophetic segment, but, uh, but I do want to go into a couple of the biblical aspects regarding this before I go into another statement here. And I just is a reminder, many of those that watch us on the Noon Institute of Biblical Research uh, on YouTube are very much aware of this. Uh, but in Ezekiel chapter 35, let me just remind you of the prophetic implications of what's happening in Israel today. It says, Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate and cut off from him that passeth out and him that returneth. Now, I've clearly been able to prove this biblically that this is speaking of Rome. He's speaking about Mount Seir. He's speaking about Edom, Esau. And we find in Obadiah that it was the children of Esau that stood there while the Syrian army ransacked uh, Jerusalem during the time, uh, 70 years, uh, 70 AD, which was right after the time of Yeshua's ministry here on earth. And it was Titus, the Roman general, who God is attributing as standing there and also taking back the holy articles uh, back uh, to Rome. Now, we know the Vatican was not established at that time, but nonetheless, in the catacombs of the Vatican are, are where these holy articles are, are now are now are at. So I can't help but wonder if they're, they're not being used more or less as a, as, as a, as a hostage of, of sorts uh, with some of the politicians in Israel. If you do what we say, we will give you these items and we will help you build a third temple according to the way they want to do it and on their own terms. But anyway, let's look at the scripture, what it says here. Verse 8, I will fill his mountains with his slain men, thy hills and thy valleys and, and thy rivers shall they fall that are slain with the sword. I will make the perpetual desolation and thy city shall not return and ye shall know that I am the Lord, Hashem that is, because thou hast said these two nations, this is the important part here, this is what, uh, this is what Mount Seir is saying, this is what Esau, Edom is saying. Again, go to Obadiah, uh, start with verse 7, you'll see there that Esau is clearly defined as being during the time when Israel was destroyed in 70 AD. We know that that was Titus, the Roman general, so therefore God is clearly showing that the, the descendants of Esau are in a specific place here. They're in a specific place, and, and, and a lot of people are totally unaware uh, about this. So... At any rate there, I just encourage you to read in Obadiah to follow up on that. Uh, so anyway, because thou hast said, these two nations, these two countries shall be mine, and we will possess it, whereas the Lord was there. That's Hashem. God himself was there. Now, God was in Israel. He was in Jerusalem. He has always been there. Uh, when Yeshua came, it was God in him that was there. All right? Now, uh, not to mention, he, he meets uh, Jacob uh, there. He comes with, the, mount, with, with, with the, the ladder, with the angels ascending and descending, and he makes the covenant with him. So we have all the proofs of where this particular place is. But it's interesting that he says, because he says, because thou hast said, these two nations, what two nations? Rome has taken and divided Israel and made the West Bank, a, a, made, a, created a Palestinian people, uh, and that includes Gaza, uh, where Hamas is there. But they've created two states out of Israel. Now, they don't want to say it's two states yet, but it is two states nonetheless. And the Jewish people, so he says, these two nations and these two countries shall be mine, which also 
lends to, to, for us to know that they will become two states. It will be, it will be uh, finalized. Uh, but he says, and we will possess it whereas the Lord was there. So showing the purpose for dividing Israel is that Rome is looking for a, a way to be able to occupy and take all of Jerusalem. This is the reason why they're doing it. It's why Daniel reports in chapter 11 that he comes up strong with a small people. That are the Palestinians. This is what we see with the United States uh, uh, the military arm of the Vatican, and, and according to John Stockwell, who says that the United States overthrows regimes, they fund both sides of, of, of the equation, like in the case of Iraq and Iran, where the United States funded the Iraqis and the Iranians and created a civil war. And it's exactly what happened. A civil war ensued so that they would kill off each other. Well, this is, what, this is exactly what the U.S. is doing as well in the case of Israel. It's very well publicly known. Everyone knows that the United States funds the Palestinian, the Hamas terrorists, and as well, they give money to Israel. And, but yet, Rome constantly makes sure that there is, there is strife between the two to kill each other, to cause trouble, to cause mayhem. Why? In order to get control of the country. Just like when the U.S. went in and they got control of Iraq, they finally sent in the ground troops, made it easier, because why? They'd already killed so many, so many of the, 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 the Shiites and the Sunnis have already killed each other off so much that it was a weaker nation by the time that they wanted to overthrow Hussein. Uh, so we're seeing the same thing happen in Israel, the same thing that happened in Ukraine. Uh, it was the United States government that toppled uh, the, the legal government of Yatsenyuk, uh, excuse me, not Yatsenyuk, but... Uh, uh, the president there, the, the pro-Russian president, he was overthrown. Poroshenko was put in his place. Uh, and clearly, you can see the Vatican's hand in every step of it, using their military might with the United States. Uh, but let me go on a little bit further with this. They want to possess these two nations. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will even do according to thine anger and according to thine envy, which thou hast used out of thy hatred against them. And I will make myself known among them when I have judged thee. That's interesting. He's going to tell us when he's going to judge them as well. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, and that I have heard all thy blasphemies which thou hast spoken against the mountains of Israel. They are laid desolate. They are given us to consume. So you're planning on doing it once you bring about the war. And I'm speaking to the Romans here in this case here, uh, using their military might with NATO you're, you're waiting until they're laying desolate to consume them. Thus with your mouth ye have boasted against me and have multiplied your words against me. I have heard them. Thus saith the Lord God, when the whole earth rejoiceth, I will make thee desolate. And this is, he's talking to Rome now. And Rome will be destroyed. And when is Rome destroyed? When the whole earth rejoices. When does the whole earth rejoice? Now my Jewish brothers and sisters have no idea that are in Israel have no idea of when the whole earth rejoices. But there is a specific time written in the, in, uh, by the Jewish writer John in the book of Revelation. This is when the two witnesses come on the scene. It's perfectly in line with uh, the two olive, uh, brand, uh, two olive trees that are on either side of the golden lampstand uh, uh, found in Zechariah. But he says, uh, just to kind of give you a little overcap here, these have power to shut the heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, have power uh, over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. So they're going to bring judgment, uh, definitely going to bring judgment. And, um, and when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom in Egypt. It is Jerusalem, by the way. Uh, where also our Lord was crucified, and they of the people and the kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, uh, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Now that clearly is clearly an indication showing it's a national news is bringing this out. And of course, we already know that the, the United States propaganda machine uh, and we know, I don't want to just pick on the U.S. because this is done all over the world. Uh, Russia does the same thing. They've got their own propaganda. The U.S. has their propaganda. Europe has theirs. Israel has theirs. And so does Iran have theirs. 
for whatever agenda they're trying to achieve. And sadly enough, it's the true genuine people in the background that end up start, starting alternative news sources that you normally find the truth of the matter. And of course, they're all made to be a bunch of nutcases in, in the long run, so no one really listens, but that's really the way it is. All right, so we go on, it says, and their dead bodies shall be in the street for three days, called Sodom, all right? And they of the people and the kindreds and the tongues, they shall see their dead bodies three and a half days. Uh, verse 10, and they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry. So when does the earth rejoice? It rejoices at the time when the two witnesses are killed. So this is when God has swore that he would bring judgment upon Rome. That's when the Vatican will be destroyed. I know that there's already... Uh, commentary is going out there that, that, that Rome will be destroyed by, by Muslims. You know, I don't care how God does it, it will happen. It will happen at a specific time. They're not going to destroy it before then, but it will be destroyed and God will do it. Um, in verse 15 of Ezekiel 35, As thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel, because it was desolate, so will I do unto thee. Thou shalt be desolate, O Mount Seir, and all Edomia, even all of it, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Now, let me, uh, as we get near the end of the news here, I want to just kind of take you back in time a little bit. This is back, uh, um, this was published on the um, 5 1 24, excuse me, January 5th, 2014. Uh, Netanyahu asked Rabbi to allow giving David's tomb to the Vatican. Now, as we know, the, the David's tomb was not given to the Vatican except by the Israeli government. There was no referendum. There was no voting. There was nothing done about it. Uh, the rabbi refused to do it, but he was ended up, it just got done, whether he liked it or not. That was uh, Rabbi Yitzhak Yosef. Uh, a Knesset member said Thursday that Chief Sephardic Rabbi Yitzhak Yosef told him that the Prime Minister's Bureau contacted him and asked to grant a halakhic permission for Israel to hand over the tomb of David to the Vatican. Interesting. The startling news was revealed by the Knesset members during a tour of the tomb of David by four MKs, that, and that's kind of like congressmen in the United States, MKs are in Israel, Yanni uh, Chetbon and the Jew of the Jewish home who initiated the tour, Moshe Feiglin, uh, who is part of the Likud party, uh, it, it was at that time, Nassim Ze'ev, uh, and Mier Poresh, uh, who is part of the United Torah Ju of, for Judaism. The MKs were, were unanimously in declaration that they intended to do everything within their power to forestall any attempt to hand over the tomb to the Vatican. There are also reports that not just the tomb, but the entire Mount Zion compound is up for transfer. So those that don't believe that all of Mount Zion was given over to the Vatican, you got it right here. They knew this is this is these are, are what we'd consider the parliamentary members of Israel of the Knesset. They knew that this was going to be done. All of Mount Zion was given over, and yes, all of Mount Zion was given over. All you have to do is go back. You can Google this. You can see uh, clearly where uh, Mount Zion was definitely given to Rome. They had special forces from Israeli police. Not just the regular police, but the special force units came in, forced out. This not only did they did they ha they they pull the Jewish people out of the tomb of David during the time that Pope Francis was there. Uh, of course, there was a lot of protests going on by the by the uh, Orthodox community before he came, and uh, and and they they removed them while the Pope Francis had his communion service in the upper room. Now. There is also a biblical passage regarding that, and that's where he says, you have drank on my holy mountain. Uh, I don't have that in front of me right now, and we are live, so I can't bring that up to you, but, uh, but I've done that many times in the past on this uh, regarding the Vatican, and uh, certainly uh, it's the Pope of Rome that's drinking on God's holy mountain, and God is not going to just sit back idle and allow this to continue on. Uh, but anyway, they did take later... Uh, uh, like a week or so later, they continued doing communion services at the upper room uh, above the tomb of David. And then also they forced the Jewish 
both men and women out of the tomb of David and the Catholic Church went in the tomb of David and held a communion service. They were showing Israel that we have it all. They were making a political statement to let the world know we have control of this. But Rome is not satisfied. They don't have it all as of yet. Let me read a little bit more of this article to you. It's very important. Uh, even though it was in January of last year, it says there have uh, been reports recently of a secret negotiation channel between the Vatican and the Israeli government regarding the tomb, and especially as a se the second floor, which the Vatican calls the Room of the Last Supper and the Mount Zion compound. Officially, this report was denied by the government with, uh, with Deputy Minister Ze'ev Elkin taking, uh, talking to the Knesset podium to state that it was untrue. However, the government has decided to place exclusive authority regarding the holy sites in the hands of the prime minister, fueling speculation that a secret deal is indeed in the works. And we saw it. It came out. It happened. Rome controls it, and Rome is also controlling what's going on with Prime Minister Netanyahu there. And I can only trust that he is backing out of this agreement now because there's been a lot of tension between him and the United States. And of course, the United States is the military arm that forces what goes on uh, with, with the world leaders that do not obey. Just like Zaman, uh, President Zaman of the Czech Republic, the, the, Czech, the Czech government refused to pay for his flight ticket to go to Russia. He wanted to go be part of the, the liberation of the parade of World War II in Russia. Why? Because as he put it, you have to remember the Jewish people were under, under Nazi control. Uh, Germany had taken over this country and they were killing the Jews. Zaman is a Jewish man. And as well as the president of uh, the Czech Republic, uh, current, Czech, uh, the pre current president of the Czech Republic right now, Finally, they did agree to pay for his flight, but even he got a phone call. And this is on news today in the Czech Republic. My father-in-law was watching that particular news there so he could translate it for me. But the, the United States ambassador from uh, the embassy in the Czech Republic called him and discouraged him from going to Russia when all the other NATO allies are against the Russians right now because of Ukraine. And he says, who are you to tell me that I cannot go to Russia to a parade? Since when does the United States dictate to these, these matters to me? So he has forbidden the U.S. ambassador to even come to the castle of the Czech Republic in Prague. My hat is off to this man. God bless Zaman, President Zaman, for making this stand. The only sad thing is they're definitely going to try to overthrow him now. Uh, he's not... In full compliance, we know that he has had his hand forced uh, in a lot of different areas there. Uh, and, and, and again, I understand Czech people living under uh, Soviet uh, rule after the Second World War, the oppression that they went through. But believe me, friends, you've not seen oppression yet. Unless you're Catholic, which most Czechs are, most Slovaks are, most people in all of Eastern Europe are Catholic. Therefore, it'll be an okay system for them. But other than that, if you are an independent Christian believing in God the way you want to believe in it, this is not going to be a safe place to be uh, at all in this world. I don't care where you are. Israel, Europe, uh, United States, they are bringing about a one world government and Vladimir Putin is fighting that. Uh, so even though he did go to the Pope of Rome, the Pope has not conquered Russia because he's not gone to Russia. So therefore it's causing a lot of problems. All right, let me get back to this again here just to finish this article up and we'll end the news here. The Vatican attempts to gain a sovereign foothold on Mount Zion have been going on for a year, but thus far unsuccessfully. Well, we know that's not true. Now it's already conquered by them. The visit to Israel by Pope Francis is less than a month away. Done, come and gone. Okay, this is a factor in the timing of the MK's tour to the compound. A representative of the Religious Ministries Department of Holy Sites was also present. Now, let me go down to this one point here I want to make. They say here in this article, for many years, the Vatican has been investing large sums in purchasing assets in Jerusalem with the purpose of blurring the city's Jewish character. Imagine that, said uh, Chet Bon. This trend must be blocked in the basic law of Jerusalem, which forbids handing over sovereignty on parts of the city to foreign entities must be enforced. Today's tour is only the beginning of the struggle and we will bring more MKs here. The Tomb of David is a cornerstone of the city's Jewish history. We must safeguard it. And unfortunately, that battle was lost when the Pope Francis came to Israel. As it is said by um, 
uh, a former Jesuit that came out of the, 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 the system there, and that's uh, Dr. Alberto Rivera. He said, when a pope's foot touches the ground of a country, it's because he has conquered that country. And he has definitely came to Israel, stood at the Wailing Wall. So he is showing that he has conquered this. And very sad, very sad indeed as, as well. But God will take it back. Have no fear. Remember, this, the prophecies there, Ezekiel 35, he definitely wants to take them both. But God is going to take it all back. Uh, we'll go through a hard time in Israel, but it will come back once God has set things in order. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Again, don't forget, we are now running on live stream. It's still running. It looks like 25 minutes to it, so I think we did it successfully there. Uh, we will be setting up a time frame for live stream in the very near future where you'll be able to watch the news live. So you can join us there. So those that were actually on live stream today have already heard this news, but you'll be able to catch it also on YouTube where we will actually have the imagery in the background so that you can see the things that we're talking about. Shalom.